Logistic regression is one of the most poorly named methods in all of statistics. If you call something regression, you would expect it to be doing regression. But logistic regression is doing classification. Classification. Naming it logistic regression is like naming your cat Fido the dog. That would be one confused cat. Nonetheless, logistic regression, we'll call it logistic regression because that's what everybody calls it. Nonetheless, it is a very widely used model, especially in medicine and you know for biostatistics and social sciences. Logistic regression is, is, is a good method. It can give you it can give you quite good performance. And so and, and the other thing which is nice about logistic regression is that it builds a foundation for some more complex methods like neural networks. And there's also generalizations called generalized linear models. So in this video, we're going to look at uh, a sort of intuitive, some intuitive motivation for the logistic regression model, how to think about it and what it's doing, and talk about some pros and cons. And in the next video, we will well, hopefully I can get it in. And then by the next video, we'll start the formalism of logistic regression. And we will look at how to find maximum likelihood estimates using Newton's method. OK, so let's look at a, a motivating example here. Example. Let's suppose you are an actuary. So suppose you are an actuary, an actuary is somebody, a statistician usually, who tries to figure out how long people are going to live and things like that for insurance companies and, and finance companies and, you know, to basically make uh, probabilistic models so that financial investment companies like insurance companies and so on and so forth can make more sort of informed decisions and make more money. So suppose you are an actuary and you want to build a model of how long people are going to, you know, what is the probability that a person will die in the next 10 years? So you want to model probability. So you want to model P death given some data about the person. So this is a very happy example. And let's say that the variables, this x, is telling you three things. Let's say that x1 is the age of a person. Let's say that x2 is whether they are male or female. I will just put m or f. And x3, let's say, is the cholesterol level of the person. That should be a good indicator. Cholesterol. And you want to find a very, very simple model. So you have this data, and you want to find a super, super simple model. And you want to have as few parameters as possible. So you say to yourself, well, let's see. I, what if I took a linear combination of these? What if I took, say, some offset w0 plus w1 times x1 plus w2 x2 plus w3 x3? So and you say, well, let's see, when age is large, this is, and say this, this W is positive, then this thing is going to be getting bigger. So as the person is getting older, then this is sort of, maybe this is telling, this is sort of something like it's more probable that they're going to die in the next 10 years. And also the cholesterol, if this W3 is positive, then as the cholesterol gets higher, then, then this is getting, this is making it, this term is making it larger. And this term, if maybe male is like, say, zero and, and female is one, then this could give you some offset, you know, either way to tell you, um, you know, to sort of increase the probability or decrease the probability depending on whether the person is male or female. And so we can, we can write this as a vector, W transpose X, where X is one, X one, X two, and X three. So this is a standard convention to put the first coordinate to always be one so that you can have this nice linear combination here and, uh, and you get an offset term as well. 
So there's one problem with this, right? This isn't a probability. We wanted to get the probability. We want, wanted to model the probability. And this thing is just some, you know, just some, some, some plane. So this, this is not a probability. And, but you say to yourself, well, I can, I can fix that. I can just send it through a sigmoid type of curve. So I can send it through a curve that looks something like this. So this is the origin. This is my, well, not x. I guess this would be like a, some, some a, you know, axis. And this would be some function. Let's call it sigma of a for sigmoid. A sigmoid function is just a ger generic name. So sigmoid is a generic term for an S-shaped curve. So this would be 1 here, 1 half, say, something like that. So when this thing, so let's, so then we could pass this through a sigmoid function like this. So we could consider, let's put it over here, sigma of this, this dot product. And that would always be between 0 and 1. So that would be good. So let's, let, so let's, so maybe we should do this. So maybe we should do the model is P death given X is sigma of W transpose X. And this is the model for linear, not for linear, for logistic regression. This is, I mean, you're not always modeling death, but this is the form of uh, the linear regression, uh, linear, I keep saying linear, the logistic regression model, is you model probabilities in this way. And this is, I'm, we're talking about, we're only gonna talk about binary classification here. You can extend logistic regression to multi-class classification in a very natural way. But in these, in this, at least in these videos for now, we're only gonna talk about binary classification. So this is the binary classification logistic regression model. Well, and I have to tell you what sigma is. So sigma here, what is sigma? There is a standard choice of sigma. Sigma A is what's called the logistic function, and hence the name logistic regression. Sigma is 1 over 1 plus e to the minus a. So we should include that in our definition here. 1 over 1 plus e to the minus a. This is called the logistic function. Logistic function. And let's let's draw actually let's try to draw a picture of what's going on here to to just solidify our intuition for for what these probabilities actually look like. So let's draw a picture. Let's draw down here maybe. We'll draw. Let's keep that. No, okay, that's fine. So let's say we have. So in our model here, let's think back up to, to this, this problem here. Let's suppose that x2 is 0. We fix x2 to be 0. We're, we're going to look at you know, just the x1 and x3 coordinates, age and cholesterol. And let's say for now, let's say maybe w0 is also equal to 0. So what is this, what is this, what is this doing? Well, first, let's think about this linear function here. So let's say w1 is, if this is the w1 axis and this is w3 maybe w1 is like 1 or something and w3 is is say 2 so this this is a vector if we just look at these two dimensions w1 and w3 form this vector here and so the level sets of the this thing w transpose x when you know when x2 is 0 and, and w0 is 0. We're just looking at this part. The level sets of this, this thing are orthogonal to this vector. So this is w. And the level sets are, let's see, this will test my drawing skills here. Level sets are these, these lines like this. And they're increasing in this direction increasing as you go in the direction of w. 
So it's a sort of a, a plane sort of coming out of coming. It's going through, you know, the, through the page at this line right here that goes through the origin. It's going through the page because when when X is is zero. So like if this is so if X is is zero, if it's the, the origin, then of course W transpose X is, is zero. And if X is somewhere over here or maybe you say it's on on the line W or maybe it's actually equal to W then this is w transpose w and so that's going to be positive it's going to be going to be bigger bit bigger than zero and then when it's minus w then you're going to have minus w transpose w so it's going to be negative and in general when you're when you're on this side when you're on the right side here it's going to be positive and when you're down here it's going to be negative over on this side so let's draw that now in, let's see if we can, let's, this will really test my drawing skills. So if we can, so well, so first let's say, you know, maybe we don't want, no, okay, that's fine. So let, let's try to draw that now in, in three dimensions, just to really make it drive the point home. So let me draw maybe this, this a square here. So this will be like a square. And I'm going to try to draw sort of three dimensions. So if, if this is this is going to be coming out of the page sort of what this went after you pass this so so what we're going to try to draw is after you pass this thing through this sigmoid function. Remember this is the sigmoid function, this is the logistic function here. And we had a plane here right the yellow lines were this plane this w transpose x and after you pass it through this sigmoid it's going to be sort of you know small it's going to be very it's going to be getting close to zero down here and then it's going to increase and then it's going to be going through a half right at this point this is sort of i'm drawing a line coming out of the page and then it's going to be getting closer to 1 as 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 x gets bigger so let me try to draw that what i was doing here in three dimensions so if you're, if there's, this is sort of coming out of the page when you're up at this corner, you're going to be close to one. This is going to be the origin. And then if we were to trace the line as, as X goes along this line right here, this function, sigma, the probability, remember this is the probability, this is going to be sort of hovering above the page here. Uh, this vertical axis is, is this this P and then it's going to go down it's going to hit a half when it's at the origin and then it's going to get small down here let me try that again a little bit I clean that up a little bit so it's something like this and more generally it's going to look something like this So up, up in this area, it's going to be high, and then it's going to sort of drop down. So you're going to have this sort of region here. Hopefully this, is, this sort of is helping you to visualize what this looks like. So it's this sort of, this function in three dimensions kind of, it starts out small down here, it's very small near zero, and then it, go, it climbs up, it hits a half at this line here, and then it gets closer and closer to one as X is getting larger in this, larger in the direction of W. And so this is what the probabilities are looking like. So if your age, uh, you know, and, and cholesterol level were, were at this point here, if they were pretty big, then you're gonna have a high probability of death. Whereas if your age and cholesterol level were, were down here somewhere, then it's going to be lower. And so the offset then, if W0 is offset, then you can shift this whole thing like a wave. Like a wave, it'll be shifted in that direction. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a sense of, of sort of what these surfaces look like. And next we'll, we'll formalize this.